I have some breaking news for you. The Urban Brookings Institute just updating its review of the Biden tax plan, and now they say it would bring in $2.4 trillion at the taxes. Uh, and of course, that's a massive decline from $4 trillion that they modeled back in March. Now, the report finding that the largest Biden tax proposals that were not included in that previous March update includes uh, pro providing tax credits for new investments in domestic and manufacturing, expanding and making refundable the child care and dependent care tax credit, uh, providing a refundable first-time home buyer's credit. And the campaign uh, has also gone on to promise so many things. Uh, and that would mean, I think, this country would either have to borrow a whole lot of money or that taxes would indeed have to go much higher for businesses and so-called rich people. I want to bring in uh, Rebecca Walzer of Walzer Manage Wealth Management. Rebecca, you know, I, I, I've always said that the, the taxes and the, the way the numbers have been crunched, it just doesn't, it just didn't match in my mind. And it's interesting to see a liberal think tank, if you will, admit that uh, they're going to have to find money somewhere else. That this is a de facto admission that Biden's going to have to find a two trillion dollars minimum from somewhere else. And it's going to probably come from big business or businesses, rather. Yes, Charles. And not only that, but this is actually an omission because you notice at the pre vice presidential debate that Pence kept harping on Kamala about the fact that if they repeal the Trump tax cut, they are going to raise taxes for middle class earners. And I really think that the timing of this is so interesting that the Policy Institute basically went back, the Urban Institute went back and said, you know what, everything he's promised on this campaign trail and now he's promising not to raise taxes on anybody that's making less than 400000 that's a lot less revenue than what we analyzed in in March of just 2020, this year, just a few months ago. And we have to redo these numbers. And now they've redone the numbers and it's a 40% decline of increased tax revenue because they are going to offer all of these giveaways. Plus, for the first time, actually not raise taxes like they were saying they were going to do. So actually, Vice Pre President Pence was right. And this tax policy is not what he was saying it was. And now we can see that right. what he's promising is going to cost a lot more money. Well, you host a podcast called Crashes in Taxes. <laughs> Earlier today, President Trump told Stuart Varney that Biden's tax policy would actually hurt the economy and the stock market. Uh, between that and what we've just seen from the Urban uh, Brookings Institute, what are you, what's your numbers say? I mean, you've looked at it, you've crunched some numbers. What are your thoughts? You know, Charles, first of all, this is the worst situation we've had, obviously, since the Great Depression with the shutdown. I cannot see America putting a president in at all who says they're going to raise taxes. You can only soak the rich and corporations so much, especially the multinational nature of corporations. They don't have to stay here, right? So you can only do that so much before your tax policy creeps into right. every American's life. And if we look at Biden's proposals, that's what he wants to do. He wants to change fundamentally our country, and it's going to take so much money. And the last time, and the last time frame that anybody wants to implement that kind of increase tax policy is when we aren't even recovered from a global pandemic that we're still shut down from. And this is asinine to me economically yeah. that we'd be speaking about raising taxes now. I cannot process it. Yeah, it's tough. It really does not make sense. Rebecca, thank you very much because you always make sense. Uh, although <laughs> Thanks, it's Charles. the kind of news that we all should share.